here's the thing. You've got to rattle your cage door. You've got to let them know that you're in there and you want out. Make noise, cause trouble. You may not win right away, but you'll sure have a lot more fun. <laughs> I've always understood feminism and sexism because of the discrimination against black people. When they rejected my application to Columbia in 1949, Columbia's law school, I went to the dean's office and said, I thought they discriminated against me because of my race. The dean assured me that was not the case. The problem, he said, was that they filled their quota of women. Seven. I said, well, I would tell that to the NAACP. And funny thing, they let me in. <laughs> I took that law degree and represented the Black Panthers and helped found the National Organization for Women. In 1970, I decided to challenge the laws that made abortion illegal. It was obvious to me that if men could get pregnant, abortion would be a sacrament. And you can quote me on that. From a church basement in Greenwich Village, our team collected 350 statements from women. I normally find that people who complain about apathy are frequently people themselves who are apathetic and really need an excuse for their own apathy. The people that get ahead are the people who do not offend the establishment beyond a very discreet level. They're no more interested in losing their job than you are in failing your course, being thrown off the faculty, or being fired from the staff. We have it worked out in our heads that they are supposed to take risks that none of us will take. I'm saying that you've got to do something. And until you do something that involves a risk, you shouldn't, though of course you will, complain about anybody else's apathy. You are the apathetic one you can control. The biggest sin, sitting on your ass. Don't agonize, organize.